Good evening, change makers. Good evening, all alumni, mentors, mentees, partners, sponsors, and all tech enthusiasts. This is an amazing evening because today we are opening acceleration program of Women Go Tech. And today we prepared for you both inspirational and informative event that we are really glad to have with all of you in different countries of Europe. Women Go Tech was established in 2017, and at that moment, we actually fitted in pretty small area. And the event happened physically, and actually we really knew each other in the room. But every single year, the program is growing uh, almost twice. And now we are so happy to say hello, not only to different countries and nationalities, but also to more than 10,000 tech enthusiasts, to our community, to more than 400 mentors and mentees, and also to 600 women who already changed their career to technology field specialties because of our programs. My name is Jaruna Prikshaite. I am a chairwoman of the board of Women Go Tech, and I will be your host tonight. If you still are not on Slido, I would like to welcome you there while adding in your browser freewslido.com and entering the code that you see on the screen. There you will find all of the community, and we prepared for you many engaging activities. Even though the evening is really super exciting for all of us here, we cannot forget that at the current moment there are many challenges in the environment. And especially we are sad that even though the programs as us, a lot of our communities uh, helping out to have more equal sector, we still have in European Union only 19% of women working in tech specialties in the sector. Uh, but with uh, all of the organizations, we hope to change that. As well, uh, we cannot ignore the war happening uh, next to us and also those women who are really in need of our help and support in requalifying and changing their careers, uh, even though um, what is happening at the current moment. So with that said, uh, I would like to enjoy uh, with you together this evening and also invite to see a greeting from our former president of Lithuania, Dalegri Buskeita, who is also a very first female uh, president of Lithuania country. And she is also the role model for many women as well as patron of this program from the very, very beginning. Let's see. Congratulations to Women Go Tech on its new start. Your program has become a great success story, bringing women into the world of technology and helping them discover new opportunities. Women Go Tech's determination to help thousands of women in Central and Eastern Europe to retrain is a bold ambition. It is important that Ukraine and women are invited to participate. New skills will be absolutely necessary for free Ukraine to build its future after the war. I wish that this program gives coverage to all women and changes attitudes about women in technology and society. Wish you all the best. Thank you to our former president of Lithuania, the Legrebuskaita. This year, this February, Women Go Tech achieved an enormous milestone. Because of the philanthropic organization Google.org grant, we are capable to expand our programs to different, to different Europe countries and also uh, to give a support for more women. Uh, and um, with that said, um, this achievement is very important for us and we are very thankful to Google.org organization and they prepared for us a special message. So let's hear out from Lisa Belazerova, a senior manager of EMEA region at Google.org. My name is Lisa uh, and I'm the senior manager at Google.org, as it was mentioned, Google's philanthropy. I lead our work in the field of what we call economic opportunity and recovery 
focusing on the underserved job seekers, small businesses across Europe, uh, here and in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. You know, one of the biggest joys of my work is when personal passion and professional work align. And it definitely happened for me with the Women Go Tech journey. Um, many of you probably will know from my previous interventions that I'm Latvian and I'm truly passionate about the potential of the Baltic region as a hub for inclusive innovation. And even more so about the potential of women in the region to help advance our societies and economies. Mentorship has also played a key role in my life. I owe my career in the tech sector to a wonderful community of mentors at Google and beyond who have been guiding me uh, for nearly seven years. Uh, and now myself, I'm a dedicated mentor to many women across uh, Eastern Europe to, to be part of the exciting milestone for Women Go Tech that um, I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, but before that, um, uh, a quick overview of the context uh, we're operating in. Uh, we're in 2023, but we still need to talk about the fight for gender equality. Undeniably, in recent years, we have seen positive developments. Firstly, more girls than ever are going to school. Secondly, women are present in the workforce more than ever before, and they're getting paid more. It's great news not only for women and girls themselves, but also for the broader social development. Educating and empowering women and girls is accounted for 50% of the economic growth in the OECD countries over the past 50 years. It's 50% of the economic growth. And while we have reasons obviously to be optimistic on some fronts, the progress is fragile and economic downturns can set that progress back dramatically. Uh, we all saw the pandemic, how it really laid bare uh, for us, how women uh, were almost twice as likely to lose their jobs. And of course, there are still sectors that are dominated by men, and one of them is ICT. Despite its growth and need for talent across Europe, 84% employed in the IT sector are still men. And we're glad to see that Lithuania is actually paving the way for the digital inclusion of women. Last year, the number of women enrolled in IT studies jumped by 71% compared to the previous year. And today, Lithuania is ahead of the EU and other Baltic countries in respect of women working in the IT field. In Lithuania, over 20% of women work in IT and the EU average is only 17%. So well done, Lithuania. And many here will agree that Women Go Tech, of course, had a huge role to play in getting more women in the IT sector in Lithuania. Just a couple of successful uh, data points uh, about the previous successes of Women Go Tech. More than 600 women requalified into technology industry thanks to their programs. 65% success rate in requalifying women to tech only one year after the program. That's way above average that we see across other programs. And of course, more than 10,000 women participated um, in their flagship introduction course, Discover Tech in Lithuania. And of course, what's very important for us is that beyond these data points, there is a community of dedicated women. And of course, there are male supporters as well. Let's not forget about them, who encourage, support, guide, and help with navigating complex career changes. And many of us who've been through them will know how tricky that is when you're changing your professional field. So when I talked about the future of Women Go Tech about a year ago, it only felt natural that the magic of their work should travel beyond the Lithuanian borders and reach more women in Central and Eastern European countries. We saw the clear potential that their model had to scale internationally to fill the growing need for regional upskilling programs focused on women. So at google.org, we're truly delighted to provide an $800,000 grant to Women Go Tech with the goal of helping 25,000 women explore the IT field and gain the skills they need to succeed in tech. Women Go Tech will create the first regional online introduction to tech program for women in CEE, and also will offer an online mentorship program to help women requalify. 
with our grant, they will be able to scale their impact across the borders of Lithuania and reach women in Poland, Czech Republic, Latvia, Estonia, and hopefully many more countries. Particular focus will be on helping women who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19 or at risk of losing their job. This is the first time in the Baltic countries when we become, when we support an NGO to become international. Um, and I have seen the development of our grant making in Central and Eastern Europe in the Baltic region. So it's a truly important milestone. And through this grant to Women Go Tech team, we're dedicated special attention to women from Ukraine helping them gain new skills and opportunities. I will finish by saying a huge thank you to the Women Go Tech team uh, and to the public and private sector community of Lithuania who have contributed to the success of their work. Of course, as we all know, it takes the village, it takes the community, and it's amazing community across sectors that Women Go Tech uh, with Judurne have managed to build. So thank you so much, and we are so excited for the journey ahead. Thank you for having me. Thank you for Lisa and for the message and for Google.org for continuing in supporting us. And also with uh, their grant, we are able to give more and more opportunities for different women to join the programs. And now we have more than 100 of our scholarships dedicated for Ukrainian women. Partners are playing the key role in Women Go Tech, uh, not only because they are providing us the heart of our program, the mentors who are dedicating their time, but as well the knowledge. What is in there? What is in that tech sector? What actually the employees are seeking to find in the future talents and women? What are the key things and the competencies that they are looking for? And uh, we are more than thankful to our sponsors as Accenture, Vinted, Google.org, Swedbank, Adform, Cognizant, Luminar, Mobile Pay, Regional Partners, North Security and Melsoft, Local Friends, Seb, Hella, Infair, Revel Systems, and supporter Telia for giving us the opportunity to actually understand what is behind the tech sector doors. And now uh, I would like to have some of our partners to discuss actually this, what they're looking for. And for that, I would uh, be glad to invite Paulus Vertalka, who is Economic Contribution Lead of European Public Affairs at Google. And he is also a co-founder of Women Go Tech program. He will lead the discussion together with our panelists. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for your attention to our delighted panel that I have here with us tonight. Um, and I'll start with a brief introduction of uh, who are these uh, lovely individuals here with us. So tonight we have Justyna from the global ad tech company at Forum. She is a vice president for product management and operations. Then we have Mantas uh, from a global uh, leading um, game developer studio and a publisher Wargaming. He is a uh, general manager at the Vilnius office. Um, and then we have Vitotas, a uh, director of engineering at Vinted. And Vinted, for some of you might already know, is a leading um, consumer to consumer platform for secondhand fashion items. And tonight's discussion is about how do we close the gap between the tech-hungry uh, companies or the, the tech-talent-hungry hung companies and the talent that is looking for uh, lovely career opportunities within those companies. Um, and we'll try to deep closer into 
What are the peculiarities in that gap that sometimes challenge the future employers um, and the future talents that want to join those companies? Um, we know that European Union um, has an estimate that by 2030, EU, will, EU tech sector will lack about 8 million ICT talent, right? Um, and that number is so huge that it's presumed that the regular education system that we have across Europe might not be able to deal with it, and not be able to supply all of that necessary talent that the tech sector is looking for. So my next question is naturally, so what are then the possible solutions? What are the potential remedies to go and achieve that kind of demand or supply that kind of demand out there? What are the you know, private initiatives out there that can help talents uh, gain necessary skills that, that companies in Europe are looking for? Um, Vitote, would you have maybe some of your examples from your own experience? Mm -hmm. I think we are halfway through already, so at some point we'll miss those 8 million. But already some companies in some countries are very far ahead in getting ready for that. If you, take, if you look at educational systems, how they looked at uh, 30 or 50 years ago, it was more or less only formal education that you can get. There's a diploma in the end and it's well recognized and, and so on and so on. What we have today is a variety of options that anyone can choose. We are sitting in context of one of these. So pleasure to be here. And there's a bunch of others completely self-taught, completely self-led, you know, self-paced. So you can sign up for online courses and go through them at your own pace, at your own will. You can stop at any point. So it's, it's like no pressure. There are somewhat formal ones where it's limited by time, it's limited by a uh, program that is designed. There's also um, universities like 42 and Turing College, which is also occupying a, a very specific and nice niche. So it's, it, we're living in really interesting times where everyone has a chance to either get into IT or to redirect one's career into IT. Excellent. So it sounds like there are plenty of options and uh, uh, that everybody can choose from. Uh, Mantas, I know you are quite an education enthusiast yourself uh, yes. um, uh, from, from other engagements that I've heard you, where, where I heard you speak. Um, do you think that all of that like, extra ecosystem beyond the traditional education system is really needed to achieve that 8 million, let's say, gap goal? I think I'm even more disruptive in my own opinion. Uh, unfortunately, European universities is lagged behind these changes. They are very huge and historical organizations and for them to include any changes is very hard. And when we see IT and technology sector in the 10 years, it's already changes so dramatically. Even in this year, it uh, actually turned upside down. And now everyone's trying to understand what ChatGPT will include. So I believe without this uh, additional ecosystem, the educational sector won't be disrupted. And I'm very glad in this part of the region that we have many initiatives, including Women Go Tech, entering Turing Society. I'm very fascinated about 42 University. I believe all of these platforms actually are the better way of uh, giving skills for young people. Uh, also, it's a not just a rosy, rosy stage, most of the initiatives which started understood that it's not easy to actually to bridge the gap between companies and the talent. Talent wants one year and uh, 5,000 euro, and companies want to have the senior person with the 10 years experience. And that's why I think the struggle is going. It's normal. I mean, the companies which is actually disrupting educational sector will need to find the ways. All right. It's interesting to hear that you think that initiatives like Women Go Tech and other similar like ones are necessary to disrupt also the whole traditional ecosystem of the education ecosystem out there to help us bridge, bridge the gap. Uh, interesting thought. Um, just a reminder to, to those of us um, who are listening to this, to this discussion is that we still have a Slido um, open for your questions, which we will turn um, in a little bit. So please go ahead, submit your questions there and make sure you upvote the ones you like. Um, 
And to continue with the panel, um, Mantha, as you mentioned, that there is quite a bit of gap potentially between what's expected, uh, uh, what, what potential talents incoming into tech sector are expecting to get in terms of the job and the needs of the tech companies on the other side. Um, so Justina, I would like to turn to you. You have an extensive career in Europe, excellent example yourself coming from the junior position all the way to the vice president at a tech company. So what do you find incoming junior tech applicants uh, mostly lacking uh, when, when they apply for a job at your company or, or maybe your stories you've heard? Um, and, if, and if they are, what are the, you know, if they are lacking something, what are, what are those typical shortfalls or what are the tendencies, the systematic issues that you, that you see? Mm -hmm. So thank you for your question, a pleasure to be here. And uh, first of all, whether junior applicants are coming with a formal education background or maybe through also self-taught education that we taught us mentioned, if we want to change a career or maybe change the path after universities, there are definitely gaps that we see in junior applicants and gaps are different. First of all, I think there's a gap um, from practical experience perspective because employers are very often in technical sector are looking already for people with practical experience. Without having it, uh, even if you have studied formally or self-paced educationally, uh, IT, uh, engineering or other roles and, you know, positions that you want to work with, having no practical experience gives you a lack of real world on the ground contribution to projects dealing with complexity. And it's very hard then to catch up because companies feel that then they need to invest even more in educating those people, right? And another gap is soft skills because it's very, very important that every employee has certain level of teamwork, of collaboration skills, of communication skills, and so on. And the third thing that I've noticed that the new talents quite often lack um, of understanding of best practices in the industry. So if you speak about engineering, for example, it might be understanding agile methodologies or documentation practices, uh, code testing uh, standards, and so on. So I think these are the main three gaps that I have spotted from my experience. And uh, speaking about the talents, what we could do. So I would again emphasize seeking for ways how to get practice, how to create track record also in your CV to show that you have real world experience working on real projects. Interesting. Okay, so three things, experience, soft skills, and the third one was uh, the latest, latest yes. uh, practices, right? Yes. Uh, Virotas, would you agree with, with the assessment overall of what you see in, in your experience also? would be very hard to disagree because I think it's, it's magnificent points. I, I would probably just suggest another angle to this is that um, sadly quite too many times I see some people doing some sort of quick informal educational training and they are expecting these 5,000 euros. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not necessarily a pitfall of a program like Women Go Tech or any other program. That's just more a mindset thing that, you know, it, this is a Kickstarter. Everything afterwards is up to you. So mm -hmm. it will be as good as you make it. No university or no program like Women Go Tech will take care of that for you. Hmm? Mantas, you also touched upon this in your previous answer. Um, and I keep hearing this um, around and around. So we have the, the sort of what we can call a mismatch between what companies are looking for and what the talent pool or the junior talent pool is getting ready for. So how come we are in a, such a situation where this miscommunication is so prevalent that we already starting to have these trends that people going through all kinds of alternative education systems come unprepared. Like how did we end up in situation and in this situation, how this could be resolved potentially so that 
the message gets across correctly. One thing that I think it's already resolving by the industry because industry already sending signals. Uh, people uh, uh, not satisfied with what they had, not all of them, but part of them. Also coding academies and institutions learning the better way to, to make the processes. And I believe, for example, Women Go Tech actually created a more human-centric process because for uh, one part of the time we believe that people just sitting by the screen will learn coding. The Coursera, any other platform was available and we thought maybe universities will die and just person will be sitting in his home and will be learning. That's already a false and we understood that human, without other humans, is not motivated to actually enough to learn. And that was already understood and many institutions which is uh, undergoing this, in these educational changes already trying to mix things. Another part is actually that many state institutions uh, created subsidy mechanism for I would call uh, false uh, products. Uh, some people were selling three months coding academies uh, in the last five years and after that the person was looking for a job. So everyone in the industry understood that three months is just for testing A, B, uh, are you able to go through or maybe it's not your way. And just later if you follow the path probably you'll become a junior, later, medium, medium developer. And that was one thing. And uh, another very important point that I believe the industry was also very classically constrained about engineering, but uh, now we see that in technology there are so many niches that every character can find his own way. Some people are better in Q&A, some people are good at analytics, uh, and not every person will become an engineer. It's just not our uh, every person can't become the single profession, so we need to choose our strength. Uh, I know 42 university and maybe a couple institutions are a lot of investing in these skills, trying to understand how would the service and maybe AI tools understand the character of the person and then just to show the way, show the path. In gaming, you know, there are so many niches, the game designers, 3, 3D, 2D graphics, that the person who is looking for a job in IT can select from the 50 different professions. And five years before, we was looking just for the Java, PHP, and maybe other more popular programming languages here. Interesting, you, you, you mentioned uh, AI, and I just saw in, in, in our Slido, uh, there was a question um, on AI and just moved, uh, escaped my attention. Ah, here it is. So the anonymous participant is asking, I'm interested in what impact AI will have on future jobs in the, in the IT sector. Is it a replacement or an opportunity for new jobs? So building on what you said, what, what would be all of your take on, on impact on tech? For wow. sure opportunity, I will be very short. Some people are cautious, some are very optimistic. Every tool the technology invented actually created better efficiency. So many for professions will learn to use it and will learn a lot of money. As the question how you can do it, you need to be first in the line. You just grab the chat GPT, learn to see how you can use it, and you'll be the first who will be gaining the advantage. But I think this is short term, right? Because long term, how far the AI can go. So definitely some professions could evaporate. I have a question being come over myself, right? So, you know, what to suggest where to lead or guide my, my son Right, because I have this question in my mind. And I, I personally believe that some professions which are more repetitive, uh, less require, requiring maybe a high degree of creativity, they're definitely under risk. How long it will take? That's the question. Mito, mm -hmm. what's your opinion? I think ChatGPT as a one-off examples take, I don't know, I, I teach in Vilnius University as well, so now the first grade students, no one out of them remembers world without Google. So they don't know a thing, they can Google, it's native to them. Guess what, it's not for us and it's not for any of you, I think. Uh, so th that's constantly changing. I think when we were going to university, well, some of us were probably making these things were small little letters, how to cheat an exam, you know. Now you kind of technology is completely out there. Nobody's doing that anymore if you mm -hmm. want to cheat. 
Regarding ChatGPT, I think the companies currently are trying to figure out what's their stance on. I, I know quite a few companies in Silicon Valley where they are having, they're having pretty strict stance on it's banned. You just can't go on that web page because it's too little tested. Are we giving away the data? Uh, so there's a bit of a, as with any technology, I think take 130 years ago, there were people in New York fighting Metro, evil technology. Yes, can you name me a technology which disrupted and created a huge house for the next two decades for in the last hundred of years? Everything else happened by the same pattern. Mm -hmm. Something new emerged, people were scared. The people who tackled the technology earned a lot of money. People who was fighting around it was lost the ability to use it. So everything was here. I, I've seen uh, in the gaming, there is very, very particular field. Um, you've seen how ChatGPT and other similar tools creating the images. It was mind blowing when you're just saying, I want the whale with the wings and he must be from Mars. And they just produced a line of the pictures. The so, so people was thinking it's impossible because it's pure creativity from the eyes point of view. But I've listened in one podcast from Gamer and he was saying, Guys, imagine we were spending months and months and months by trying to create one character and then mm -hmm. to, to create how he's turning his nose and face. And now you just create a character and you ask ChatGPT to just to make a line. So from one perspective, it's scary if you think that you will be doing the same thing. But from other perspective, you'll be just able to do 10 times more with the same tool. So, for sure, I mean, you will be learning to build and engineering as it, as it core is too boring to remain. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about simple coding skills. So, it's already happening in a, I'm not IT guy, so probably guys who knows it better, but the whole programming is involving from the letter to the modules. You just grab the things, you just attach the thing. Mm -hmm. The whole system is emerging and trying to become more human centric. So we are not builders, we are creators, and that's why technology is helping us. So it sounds like the moral of the story here is that don't fight it, rather master the technology while it's still time. Uh, something in that direction, right? Um, naturally, then, we have you know, hundreds of women go tech mentees and mentors um, uh, watching this event, um, but most importantly for, for the mentees themselves. So how should they set their expectations correctly going into this program and then later applying into jobs and going into potentially first interviews, whether it's for a, for a first role in tech or for promotion, um, whatnot, and what should they you know, where should they invest their time and effort to really set themselves up for success? Um, Justina, maybe mm -hmm. you'd like to give it a shot. I think first of all, coming to this program and in general, it starts with having a clear goal for your career. What do you want to achieve? And then align this goal with what the program can give you. So how to get the most from the courses, from the training, from the experts, and most importantly, from the mentor that each and every mentee works directly. So also share the goal and expectations to the mentor so that the mentor, by knowing that, can help you achieve the most through this time and help you prioritize and use your time effectively. Also, it's important maybe to, first of all, yourself, but also with the help of mentor, with other mentees or professionals around you, to ask them to help to assess your skill set and where are the gaps towards the career you are pursuing, where should you personally should invest. Maybe it's um, knowledge you have to build first. Maybe it's already about practical experience or soft skills again, right? And mm -hmm. again, for that program, try to seek for those things, ask for frequent feedback and act on it. I think that's the most important. And lastly, don't see this program as a silver bullet that you would complete and you would land the job. Because as discussed previously, I think all of us agree, uh, it's a stepping stone. It will mm -hmm. give you some knowledge, some experience, but then employers are typically looking for a bit more. So proactively look then for how to cover those gaps even further. Mm -hmm. Internships, academies, practical experience, create a track record, expand your network, 
things like that. A lot of options. Uh, Vito das Mantas, would you have anything to add in terms of advice? Where to bet, you know, where to place their bet to, to land a successful career? I would just suggest the words of encouragement. The program is called Women Go Tech, not Men Go Tech. So, so actually, as a, as a hiring manager in, in multiple companies, I have seen and noticed this kind of informal statistic, which is also backed up by scientific research, is that somehow our society makes uh, women be less confident than men. So if there's a job ad for a certain job and there's 10 requirements asking for that job, in, in somewhat simplified and ridiculous situation, uh, uh, women would be matching nine out of 10 of these and are so close and doesn't hit the apply button. Mm. And then there would be so many males who would come in hitting five of them and say, ah, won those 5,000 euros. Uh, so I would just encourage hit that apply button. And I have seen so many times where just, well, I didn't even expect you would call us and ends up getting a job. So just hit the apply button. All right. Courage. Mantas, anything from, from your tips? It's a good program. It develops the very different skill sets, soft, soft particularly. So you'll be just a stronger person. Whatever you're looking for, you'll become a stronger person. And if just there is a single and practical example, I would, uh, I would be looking for my strength in this program uh, because we are very different as a characters and we, some, we do something brilliantly, something average and something poorly. So in technology, you can do whatever you want, but you need to find the bridge between what you are good, what's your passion about, and then you'll just learn it. And it's not just engineering. It's much, much more wide at actually field. Thank you. Moving to the last, last topic uh, for this panel, I think our representation here, gender-wise, is quite a quite a mirror image of what we see in the tech sector, right? And Women Go Tech is trying to change that so that we would have more female talent uh, in the tech industry in the long run. So um, what should the incoming Women Go Tech mentees be aware of about their pursuit of career in a tech sector where, which is dominated by men? You know, what should they kind of realize maybe up, up in advance. Um, and also, what should you, um, what do employers need to do to really help women onboard uh, their companies? What, what do they need to do to on onboard more diverse talent, just beyond wild, white male typically, right? That we see across, um, across Europe. So um, a bit of reality, uh, um, check and, and, and advice needed from you um, for both mentees and the partner companies of this program of how to make that uh, integration happen smoother. Mante, maybe you want to take a first step? Very calmly. It's not one question, it's seven in, in one. In yeah. essence. Uh, first of all, I believe that most of the things is happening by the stereotype and it's happening in a secondary school. That's what they're losing, the difference. And I'm, I have my two daughters, and I already see the stereotypes is coming to their head. I'm trying to push and balance these things, but they are coming, and they already see the examples. And they have the visions, what they're looking for. And it's mostly dominated by the past. So I believe this program is brilliantly trying to show that this is just stereotypes. And actually, you can choose whatever you want. In the future, the modern economy, they all will be tech-based in different escapes. So that's why I believe we just need to push back these stereotypes and show that there is a huge variety uh, for the, every person which is looking for. And companies also need to do their homework because diversity as a theme, not just about the gender equality, about many things, age, race, nations. We are still struggling with that. Maybe not in the United States, but in Europe, we're learning that. We're learning how to just to put different talents into the group and to create a better environment. And I believe the diversity as a theme will be very important for the next decade, in, in mm -hmm. particular in, in, in Europe, because we are short of talent and the international companies cannot thrive without diversities. Mm -hmm. Of course. Vidote, any, any tips from your side for an incoming mentee into tech world? 
Or what to be prepared for? I was ready to shoot the advice for the companies, uh, so I'll do that. And <laughs> meanwhile, I'll come up with the answer yeah. for the, what you're asking now. So personally, I would always advise companies saying, oh, we want to do this you know, diversity thing and be supportive and modern and all of that. So the, the one thing that I would always advise, is make a pay gap report public. Not gender pay gap, age pay gap, all of these. And then, yes, it will be really uncomfortable. You will have males, females, 20% gap. Okay, but probably some of those 20% are explainable with reasonable reasons. But there will be some that are not that well explainable. And I think that's why a lot of companies don't do that report. Mm -hmm. And then you have to make commitments out of those 20%. 5% is wrong 5%. Here's what we will do in the next five years. Very hard commitment to make. But if the company says, we want to do the diversity thing, do the pay gap report. Okay, that's a clear tip. And then moving maybe to Justina. Um, again, mm -hmm. you're a successful example yourself, um, how to make a, make a career in tech from junior to very senior position. What would be your tip for, for the women go tech mentees saying, what to be aware of, how to prep, um, anything of that sort. I'll give a practical advice. First Beautiful. of all, don't be scared. Men are nice. Don't come with that expectation that, oh, it's gonna be men I'm gonna work with. So that's first of all. Be confident. As Vito has explained, start building your confidence with hitting that apply button. And once you land it, speak up in team meetings, make your ideas heard, show what you are bringing to the team. And then if something maybe not exactly nice happens, call out the biases, hmm. provide feedback, call out what is happening, share what is not good. If you know something goes south, include your leader, include HR, right? Mm -hmm. But drive a change, don't be silent about that because this is only how the change will happen. And for the companies, I really loved Vito's advice. It's a very good tip. But I would also add from the company's perspective, it's also very good to measure social, emotional environment, how different people feel and it's about all of us, not in particular only women. Uh, make those reports available. See what are the results. See what you can do to change that. Maybe some bias, consciousness, programs, trainings. Uh, a lot of people, all people, are not always aware and usually not aware of the biases we have. Mm. We all have a lot to learn. Thank you so much. These sound like uh, spot on tips. Um, and I like, the, I like the, the phrase you, you use, drive the change, right? Be the, be the change driver out there. Um, not with your own career path, but the surroundings around you. And I think the same goes for men as well, uh, be the, the, the drivers of change to make the environment more inclusive uh, for diverse talent. Um, we're out of time, so thank you so much for listening, for asking questions um, over, over Slido. Um, I think the message is, is clear that you are in the right place, you are in the right track, it's a matter of doing the homework, the, the, the diligent progress, um, being courageous and ac acquiring the knowledge, not being afraid of new tools out there and making a success out of yourself and the community around you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your insights, Justyna, Vitotas, Mantas and Polos. It's an interesting and very important discussion to have. In fact, you know, encouraging women participation in tech and not only helps us to close the gap uh, and helps us with talent shortage, but also it brings more diverse views and opinions to the table, which helps with problem solving and innovation. So it's not only the right thing to do, but it's also a strategic move for the industry. And supportive community is also a crucial part for encouraging more women to enter and stay within the tech sector. And you know, this community can also help encourage women to become leaders, role models, and 
uh, help with the diversity down the line. And this is something that we at Women Go Tech are building. I'm very happy to see such an active and motivated community of mentees, mentors, experts, and partners in the current cohort of the acceleration program. Our community this year is very international. They come from various different countries, from Argentina all the way to Greece, to Norway, Poland, Ukraine, and many, many more countries. And actually, I have a question for you, the audience. How many countries and nationalities combined do we have in this year's acceleration program cohort? So this is one of the questions that we have in our upcoming Women Go Tech quiz, which is starting in Slido right now. So go answer some questions and we will pick a few of you who will win some special Women Go Tech prizes. And in the meantime, I want to say that, you know, this program is officially starting today, but you have already shown an incredible sense of community. And it doesn't matter if it's a mentor, a, a male mentor who's been working in tech for the last 10 years in Spain, or it's a CEO of a tech company who's female in Lithuania, or maybe someone who is just starting their journey in tech as a mentee, maybe a Ukrainian woman who relocated to Poland. All of you have showed that you are ready to show what you know and maybe don't know and lend a helping hand. So please, never underestimate the power of peer support. Embarking on a new career or trying to progress in your current role can be daunting, but just know that you do not have to do this alone. I encourage you to lean on the community support and guidance and let their support propel you towards your dreams. I encourage you to take initiative, to be active, and to build bridges between new colleagues, new communities, and you and your new role. So now, I invite you to see a short video that illustrates real struggles, real thoughts that some of us might be having right now, and some very great advice from our alumni members. Let's have a look. began is half done and your beginning is certainly good if you are here. You have taken the first step leading to a new you. Now just contact your mentor and start this amazing journey. Enjoy the ride. New in a mentor role, uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. However, there's a real person behind the scene. Therefore, as we share the growth, we share responsibility. So go for it and afterwards share the experience, what worked, what not, and this is the way we grow. So 
I think a lot of us can relate and see ourselves in a similar situation like we just saw right now. Actually, over the years, us, the team, the organization, we saw even the most hesitant and shy people overcome their obstacles and reach their goals. In fact, we already count more than 600 impact stories of women who found their first job or an internship in tech sector thanks to Women Go Tech. And one of these women is Greta, who is here with us today, and she's ready to share her inspiring story. Our alumni Greta has reached her goal and is now working as a product owner in Sweatbank. So don't forget that while Greta is speaking, you can ask some questions on Slido, and then afterwards we can have a little Q&A session. So hello, Greta. Hi. <laughs> it's very nice to have you here today. It's very nice to be here. <laughs> so the stage is yours. Tell us what you want to share. Uh, yeah, I actually wanted to share my story as inspiration because I think we've, uh, everyone has been there who tried to change their career path. So my career shift started more than four years ago. I was working in marketing, I was successful, I had good clients, I had good results, and everything went perfectly, except I didn't feel that much inspiration in my daily work anymore. And then when I tried to pinpoint where that inspiration went, I found that I felt happiest when I solved the technical problems and then when I tried to think, think of technical solutions. So that's why I started to think about IT naturally. Uh, but I think I was a bit sabotaging myself because I was thinking that maybe it's just a phase and it will pass. I was also thinking that I've, I've been in university for years study, studying for this and I also uh, been working in this for quite some time. So I was afraid to give up my salary, to give up my title, to give up my time to start over again. And uh, basically, I kind of left this idea aside. But I saw, I remember I saw an ad of Women Go Tech about the mentorship, and then I took it uh, as a sign. I thought that the worst that could happen, probably I will understand that maybe it's not for me, and, and that's it. But so I did apply, I passed all the interviews, and I was proud that I got in. Uh, that year, Women Go Tech was a bit different. There were mentorships and there were consultations. So I was actually in consultation part. I will be honest, I was a bit sad about it because I was looking for that mentor to guide me through. But I think that was the best thing that could happen uh, at that time. And I thought that I will seize the opportunity and take everything that I can from that. So I, I think my attendance was like 99% of uh, all the consultations that I had. I went to backend, frontend, UX data analysis. I think I went everywhere. And that's how I found that I actually want to be a product owner. That's how I literally went through and understood which path is the right path for me. So I went to those consultations, I raised questions, I also stayed after the sessions to approach the experts and seize the opportunity. And another part which was amazing at which was mentioned before was the community itself. I think when it's uh, people that are so relatable that are surrounding you, I think that's the best environment you can be in because everyone is on the same path. Some are more advanced, some are a bit less but it's okay, and you can share your experience, your advice, maybe some books to read, some courses to attend. And to this day, I remember one question uh, of a lady that I met, and she said, now that you know where you wanna go, uh, have you applied already? Uh, and I said, no. <laughs> then we met on the second event, and she asked the same thing. So did you apply already? And I said, no. And I think back in the day, I was thinking that I was not ready. I don't have enough knowledge, I just started. It's not for me just yet. I need to learn and then I will go. But then the third event came up <laughs> and I was like thinking, I cannot let this thing happen again. I cannot say that I haven't applied again. And I did apply. Uh, to my disappointment, all my applications <laughs> failed. I think at that time, it's like a never ending circle. You're like a student again. So you cannot get a job because you haven't, don't have an experience. 
and then you cannot get experiences because you don't have a job. So I was a bit disappointed, but then I had the community to get me back up on track, and I had an amazing suggestion, which was maybe you should try become a BA first, and then learn the knowledge, uh, get your way in, and then work your way up. And then I tried this, so I did apply, and I got the job. <laughs> but the job was not uh, easy to get, to be honest, because later on we talked with my manager, and she said, that, yeah, well, you were not the best candidate uh, out of everyone that we talked to, but you had the fire in your eyes. And then, of course, she told me later on that she called Women Go Tech, <laughs> and then uh, every, she got like very good feedback, and that's why she decided to take upon uh, me and try it out. And I remember my first task was to integrate mobile application into our service. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't know what this mean in practice uh, at all. <laughs> So I kind of, since I'm the person who's trying to uh, seize the opportunity, I just found the architect to talk about where I should start. Uh, and then she kind of put me on the right path and said, OK, so if you need some help, just call me anytime." <laughs> so I did call her, not once per week, sometimes uh, several times per day. And she was happy to support me uh, throughout all my way. Uh, my whole team and my team manager was also very supportive of my journey. And then in the end, I had the technical knowledge to do my day-by-day -day activities. And then I was working on other stuff as well. So I think it was a great path. I think I took like more than one and a half year to co go from junior to, to mid-BA. Then it took me another half year to get the award of employee of a year in my company. And then within three years, I became an APO. So it took me three years to reach my passion and what I like. And I couldn't imagine myself in any other place. I feel happiest where I am. And I think my main message today is that you are the owner of your mission and the mentor is only there to help you. Thank you, Greta, for sharing your story. I see a lot of messages incoming from the participants thanking you for such an honest you know, story about your career. And we have some questions for you. So one question is for you and now as a woman in tech, what do you see as the biggest obstac obstacle still? And maybe you have some tips how you overcome them on a daily basis. I think since now I'm the product owner and I have my team who I'm working with quite closely and I have quite a lot of women that I work with, I think the biggest obstacle is that women feel that it's not enough just yet, they're not enough, and then that they don't know how to celebrate their achievements. So for instance, uh, it, we awarded another person as employee of a year and then she thought that she didn't deserve it but she was the best person that I can imagine for that title. So I think you just need to believe in yourself and then celebrate your achievements. Great advice. I hope our mentees are listening and really, you know, putting this at the back of their minds once they enter tech. We have one more question. Uh, it's about the recommendations that you can share with the mentees in order to get the maximum out of the program and the experience over the next six months. I think uh, the best thing that you can have is motivation. You shouldn't wait for a mentor to approach you or to do magic for you. You need to set your goals straight, what you want to achieve or at least to which direction because me myself I entered not knowing where I will go but at least some kind of direction where a mentor could lead you and I would encourage to for you to take the lead in the relationship and try to approach and utilize <laughs> it's not a good word but <laughs> to utilize the relationship as much as you can while you have the opportunity great so thank you Greta so much for joining us here today and giving some advice thank you and now I also want to share something I saw recently that inspired me. So I saw a LinkedIn post um, and I think that the takeaway can really inspire the community of our mentors and the mentees that we have here with us today. So I saw uh, one mentee, her name is Alex, uh, posting about her experience even before the official start of the program. 
She said that, you know, even before she received now recommendations from other mentees on tips and tricks, how to reach her goals. She got recommendations from mentors on what kind of certificates they, she needs to complete. She also got suggestions from the community in the seventh cohort of the program, offering to review her CV to help her prepare to land a new job. And even, you know, community members, they agree to set up coffee dates uh, and show, show Alex around their offices so she can gain a better under, understanding of the day-to-day. -day. And it's not only this. Uh, I browse sometimes, you know, through the platform that we have this year and I see a lot of discussions happening and um, one of the things that really makes me happy is that we have already communities in Vilnius, Konas and as far as Norway organizing live meetups for themselves. So this truly shows that the pro program, it doesn't have any limitations, any borders, and it's not only what is written in the official agenda. So each one of you is in the driver's seat and you are in control of your own career journey, of your experience in this program, and you also have the chance to shape this experience for others. So I would say focus on yourself, focus on the people around you, and you know, most importantly, build bridges with yourself. Build bridges between yourself now, at this exact moment, watching this event, preparing for the journey, and yourself in six months, in one year, in 10 years maybe, being exactly where you dreamed to be. And lastly, don't forget to stop once in a while, to breathe and to enjoy the ride. So now I want to invite all of you to breathe together and participate in a short guided meditation by our partners, Vinted. Let's have a look. So, this is it. This is where the change starts. And change can be scary. So breathe. Change can be scary because it's often hard. It doesn't happen overnight. In fact, change might not happen over six months either. Change is not an end goal. Change is a process. Change can make you feel anxious because you're not really sure what will happen next. Remember, it's okay to feel anxious. So breathe. It's going to be worth it. You chose change because you're not fine with things how they are. Because a life good enough wasn't good enough for you. You aimed high when you decided you want to change things. Many things. Maybe all of the things in your life. 
you took ownership of shaping your future. Remember, it's okay to feel anxious, to feel unsure. You've started the change on your own, but as mentors and participants, we're here to co-create this future together. We're here to care for each other as we rediscover ourselves. We're here to grow as professionals, as people, as women. It's okay to feel unsure. You're going where you haven't gone before. We know how you feel. At Vented, we are doing it every day. We're aiming high and taking ownership of our aims. We're co-creating things that wouldn't be possible alone and caring for each other as we go. We're growing because there's always room for growth, for future change. And we feel uncertain and anxious sometimes too, but it is nothing compared to the joy of accomplishment. The marvel of seeing what you can achieve. The pride of becoming a better version of yourself. If we want to change, we have to go through it all. As you go, remember, breathe. It's going to be more than worth it. It's going to be amazing. Our dear community, we have a very ambitious goal and a dream. Because of Women Go Tech programs, we want to reach 25,000 of women, help them to navigate towards the career in tech sector. These are in very different individuals with uh, their own beliefs, with their own doubts. But what we can have is each other, because the human to human relationship is the most important thing. And we have the only wish for you, just raise your hand, ask a question, uh, contact your mentors, talk with them, and you will figure it out. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. We really hope that you enjoyed, and now you're really, really ready and excited to start this journey. We want to say thank you to all of you, especially mentors who are not counting their hours, and the dedicating them to you. Also to our partners who are constantly thinking what knowledge to bring uh, to you and how to bridge the gap between the talents. And also to our team who are trying to give you the best experience possible. Uh, we want to thank for our sponsors, Accenture, Vinted, Google.org, Swedbank, Adform, Cognizant, Luminor, MobilePay, our regional friends, Nord Security and Melsoft, local friends, Seb, Hella, Infair, Revel Systems, our supporter, Telia, and communication partner, Rushmore. Thank you to all of you. And we are wishing you the great evening, and we're wishing you to accelerate. Start your journey now. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.